Hello everyone, Richard here at Kelvin Wazoo. And I've been busy buying records for the past two months. Um, I've got a lot of stuff for uh, this episode of Recent Finds, uh, for future episodes of Recent Finds, uh, to catch up with a, a lot of this. In this particular episode, I'm really focusing on some of the more out there, um, the ambient drone, uh, even performance art, lo-fi site, just like it says, you know, in the title. Uh, some really, really interesting um, stuff. Some of this I picked up uh, a while ago. Well, actually, with this particular set that I'm going to show, um, these are all very recent acquisitions, so um, I don't think, um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, these are all within the last couple of weeks that I've picked up, uh, but I do have a lot of records that I picked up over the past couple of months that I haven't talked about or shown, and I'll be getting to them. And this was a blind buy, this one coming up here. Um, it was an interesting cover. Okay, just nice, kind of like a pencil drawing. And, um, you know, it was uh, advertised, you know, the uh, sticker. You know, we've got some really nice orange vinyl. I thought, hmm, it's pretty interesting. So this is John Mueller and James Platkin. And the album is called Terminal Velocity. And I thought, oh, this is going to be kind of cool. Uh, not really a whole lot on the cover to tell you anything. And then the inside, you know. So I'm like, ah, oh, what is this? And I look it up. And it is um, electronic drone and noise. I thought, oh, well, all right. It was very highly rated by people who own it. I was like four and a half. The average was like four and a half stars. Um, and I thought, well, okay. And then the other cool thing is that um, it's it was a limited edition. And then you can see on here, you know, it's numbered. 500 copy limit. Uh, and this was number 128. So, give a listen. I find this really interesting, okay? Um, yeah, I, I find this really interesting. And in fact, I've listened to this several times and uh, each time I'm listening to it, I find it enjoyable. I find it soothing. I find it engaging. But also, I find that I can kind of step away from it while it's playing and still be absorbing it while I am occupied doing other things. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, John Mueller is a drummer, and he was a founding member of uh, the groups 
of groups like Pele, uh, collections of colonies of bees, uh, volcano choirs. So if you're familiar with any of, the, of these bands and projects, I am not. I've never heard of any of them. Then uh, James Plotkin, he's a guitarist who was in uh, Adam Smasher and uh, the Lotus Eaters. Again, these are bands I've never heard of, so I, I got nothing on it. That needle drop you heard is, uh, the title of the piece is Eigenlicht. And um, so yeah, there's, there's uh, the names of the pieces, Vestibular Apparatus, uh, Hypnagogia, um, Elgenlicht, uh, and and Thipnik, uh, Praedormitium, pre Subvocal, and Micro Sleep. Um, yeah, so this blind buy, uh, I really, really like it. So I am glad I picked it up. And I got to admit, you know, I, I can be drawn to noise, ambient, drone. Um, and I find it really, you know, interesting. You know, recently on the Gunkles, we uh, talked briefly about Lou Reed's Metal Machine music. And I haven't listened to that all the way through. Um, I just listened to, like, portions of it. Um, this is something I could listen to. It's a double album. Um, I wouldn't necessarily listen to it all the way through in one sitting, but I can certainly listen to two sides, you know, and then maybe in another uh, another time I would listen to the other two sides. Um, I'm going to listen to Metal Machine music again and go through it just in bits, you know, uh, because um, I, I don't know if I still want to get metal machine music and add it to my collection because that to me is listenable. I'm not convinced metal machine music is listenable. So eh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, that was Terminal Velocity, a 2012 release limited on orange vinyl. Now the next one I picked up uh, was, this was one I picked up when we did a uh, the Gunkles went to Gunkling, and this is a uh, Aphex Twin. This is a Peel Session, Peel Session Two. All right, this was released in nineteen, excuse me, twenty nineteen. Uh, so Aphex Twin is uh, you know Richard David James, Irish born, raised in Cornwall, England, um, and he was a really significant big mover and shaker in the uh, ambient EDM realm. Uh, I have the um, Selected Ambient Works release. I really enjoy that. And, and this is really, really good. The uh, needle drop I have for you is uh, from the uh, song Radiator. Very, very good stuff. Uh, again, I really like this. So there's uh, three tracks on this. There's uh, Slow Bird Whistle, Radiator. Uh, actually, four tracks. Pea String and then Pancake Lizard. So uh, the uh, Peel Sessions on Warp Records. I really enjoy them. And um, I pick them up whenever I see them. Interesting about um, James, Richard David James. He started playing music, or making music, I should say, uh, when he was 14, and this would have been in 1985. 
And partly what I what I read, what he said about that was his creating music was a refuge from, for him to get away from that bloody awful music that his sister was listening to, which was the Jesus and Mary chain. Okay, well, um, we'll forgive him for his disparagement of the Jesus and Mary chain. Uh, but at that time, you know, 1985, when he was 14, that would have been when Jesus and Mary chain released Psycho Candy, which is um, a very noisy album. Um, I mean, there's songs, so it's not really noise, but it's very, you know, deliberately lo-fi. And, you know, I could understand, you know, James's response that it was bloody awful music. But anyway, uh, Aphex Twin, uh, now in my collection uh, from the Peel Sessions, uh, Peel Session 2 with the uh, them. All right, now I got two from this band coming up here. And this was a band I had heard of, but I really knew nothing about. And then I went to a live show here in Chicago at the Riviera. Uh, and I ended up buying, um, they had these like retrospective compilations for sale. And the band is Stereo Lab. And I really, that show made me a fan. I mean, I really, really love their music. And so the first one I have here is Switched On, uh, which is, um, I guess we can call it an EP. And uh, it's from, the original would have been from 1992. This is a uh, 2018 remaster. Uh, and I got this one because it has on here Super Electric, which was um, from their 1991 EP. And I just loved that song when they played it at the show. I loved a lot of the, the songs. So I picked it up. Uh, here's the needle drop from this one is the song Super Electric. I love the simplicity and the repetitiveness of the guitar part. Uh, I, just overall, the the record, this record has either, again, it could be the deliberate lo-fi quality of the recording, but I kind of feel like that there's some inner groove distortion going on because when you look at this record, I said it was an EP and it really isn't. Um, but, the, you know, the dead wax, the run-out groove is, like, really, really small, if you can see that. Uh, not so much so on, on side A, but it's still pretty small. There's not a lot of dead wax. So, um, you know, my alignment, you know, if your alignment on your cartridge is just a little bit off, you can pick up on that inner groove distortion. Um, but there is some definite lo-fi quality to this that I'm not necessarily completely enamored with. Uh, I'm going to probably still be on my search for the EP Super Electric because I just really, really like that song. Um, the other one that I picked up by Stereo Lab is this one here. 
the group played Space Age Bachelor Pad music, which again, uh, the uh, Space Age Bachelor Pad music was part of their set when I saw them here at uh, the Riviera, which was, gosh, it was probably about a year ago. Um, this uh, is a 2018 remaster. The original uh, was released in 1983, or 93, excuse me, 1993. And uh, this was their second album. Their first album was Pang. Uh, that was their first release. This was their second release. And as a, uh, it's a very solid album. And I would even characterize it as a good entry point for you know, listening to Stereo Lab. Um, I have heard from others that Dots and Loops is a good one, uh, entry point. I have not listened to that one yet, so I'm unfamiliar with Dots and Loops. Uh, but this one, I, I do. I really, really like this. This is a solid, solid album, and the needle drop I have for you is the song Avant Garde M.O.R. Very good. So Stereo Lab, the group played Space Age Bachelor Pad music. Uh, good stuff. Okay, now this next record, as things start to fall on my floor, is one that um, I heard from uh, Jason Skills. He talked about it in one of his videos, and it just sounded interesting. And the cover uh, just kind of really stood out. That's this here. Black Lips Bar, Androgens and Deviants. Um, industrial Romance for Bruised and Battered Angels. So this is really incredible. Uh, just a couple days after I watched uh, Jason's uh, video, I saw this in, in the local record store. Um, it is a 2023 release. It is a fantastic compilation uh, produced by Anone, uh, who was previously known as Anthony of Anthony and the Johnsons. And it includes performance art pieces by um, this, this collective of, um, are they the, who is the name of the collective? Um, is it the Black Lips? Um, apparently there was this the bar in New York City that, um, yeah, called the Black Lips Bar. So they had these live performances in here uh, from the summer of 1992 and also a performance from the Ides of March of 1995. So you had these live things going on and uh, which are, as I say, some of it's performance, some of it is just commentary. Then we have these really, really excellent, deep DJ tracks of various songs, um, just really incredible stuff. And then we have also several songs by uh, Anone on here, so uh, who, as I said, produced and put this together. Um, Anone also did the artwork. It's got the these um, great information on the inner sleeves just really really nice uh put together and the needle drop i have for you is uh the performer is diamanda gallus 
and uh, the piece is called Double Barrel Prayer. <laughs> Yeah, that is some intense, wild stuff. Really, really good. Um, so if you see this, you know, and that's kind of, you know, in your wheelhouse, uh, definitely pick this up. It's a new uh, new release. So um, I'll put all that back together later. All right, so now the next one is from one of my favorite bands when it comes to um, electronic avant-garde uh, music, and that is the band Coil. And this is Coil Presents Black Light District, and the title of the album is A Thousand Lights in a Darkened Room. Uh, this was originally released in 1996. This is a 2023 remastered limited edition on clear purple vinyl. So um, let me pull one of the double album. So yeah, we got the. Uh, it's it yeah definitely it's it's purple. It may not look that way here on the, on this video. So, um, yeah, Coil is, this is their only release where they called themselves the Black Light District. Um, and this is also less musical and <clears throat> more ambient and drone-like and even mechanical sounding at times. Um, but it's just, again, really... Fascinating um, album, and I'm just really, really enjoying it. Um, we got a big list on the inside here, you know, of people that they thank, and you know, uh, some of the I, you know, some of the people, you know, it's interesting who they are thanking and recognizing, you know, including uh, people like uh, Trent Reznor. Um, then you also hear they also mention. Uh, a couple of names that really stood out to me, besides uh, Trent Reznor, was, as I go through and try and find them, um, Clive Barker, um, Julian Cope, the Rough Trade uh, record stores, Rough Trade shops. They identify several people who work in the shops. And it was interesting when I saw the... Uh, they were recognizing Bruce LaBruce. Um, so if you know anything about Bruce LaBruce, and if you know anything about Coil, I thought that was pretty interesting that they uh, mentioned Bruce LaBruce. So uh, the needle drop I have for you from this one is called Stoned Circular One.
fascinating, fascinating material. Um, I just, in terms of the ranking of this release, I guess, this is considered by uh, uh, other websites as sort of like an average three-star uh, recording of theirs. Um, so, I mean, if you're not familiar with Coil, you know, I would say, you know, don't start with this one um, because, uh, yeah, it's just not the one to start with. But if you are a fan of Coil and you don't have this in your collection, it's worth getting that reissue. It is really, really, uh, really good. And then uh, my last record. Uh, this is one that uh, I saw Derek Higgins show on one of his recent episodes within the last couple of weeks. And um, I went and listened to it online and I really, really liked it. So I put it in my want list in Discogs, and then boom, um, a U.S. seller showed up uh, pricing this at a very reasonable price. And uh, it is the band Loop, and the release is A Gilded Eternity. Now, this was originally released in 1989, and my copy is, this is a 2014 remastered, um, 45 RPM, limited and numbered uh, edition. So, um, you know, Discogs mentions that Coil record is not just being a limited edition, but it's numbered. It's not. Um, and it's a very insufficient entry. So I may go in and and add information to, because uh, it's just, they just have like one photo. and But anyway, um, this is truly a numbered one. And uh, so uh, you can see here, they, they, they do have a spot where they put the number on it. This is number 381. Um, I'm not sure what the limit was. I think it was uh, around 500. So Loop is this British band that focused very much on noisy, repetitive, psychedelic riffs, uh, very guitar heavy. Um, it's been called space rock, it's been called trance rock, uh, it's been called kraut rock, um, and also drone and noise rock. You know, all those labels have been applied. Um, they formed in 1986, and as I said, this is from a 1989 release. They were very much influenced by Can and the Stooges. And you definitely hear that kind of influence, especially with the 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 loudness of the guitars and the and, and the noise and but in within all that noise there is melody and music you know being played. Um I would say that more modern bands who may have been influenced by this uh, I think of the Black Angels. So if you're familiar with the Black Angels and you like the Black Angels, you know, this is uh, probably something you will enjoy. Um, the guitar and bass is very forward. The vocals, it's, it's almost like shoegaze in a way in that the vocals, you hear someone singing, but you can't really hear what they're singing or saying. You know, it's it's there, but it's not um, it's not forward. It's 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 not the separation is not there. It's overpowered by the guitars uh, and and the bass, and which is fine to me. I really like that. The other band, I I haven't found anything that acknowledges that this may have been a uh, influence or that the band Loop. Uh, may have been an influence, is R.E.M.'s Monster. So um, there are some, I could see some similarities and maybe potential influence going into the creation of Monster. Uh, that, you know, maybe it came from this. Um, so the needle drop I have for you is from uh, the song Vapor.
really strong uh, all the way through the this particular release. As I said, it's it's two records. It's 45 RPM, but it also comes with a seven inch single, and just really really good. It's, it, in fact, I've started listening to other releases of theirs online, and um, it, it's it's good. It's really good. Um, I'm picking uh, picking it up as I um, as I find it. So there you go. Those are my releases. Uh, hey, leave a comment in the down under. I do enjoy seeing and reading your comments. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as newsdude76. That's N E W Z D U D E seven six. I also have a Facebook page called Calvin Wazoo. You can follow me there where um, I post not just my own videos, but other music-related content, hit the like button. It really helps when you do that in terms of distribution. Subscribe if you want to, if you haven't already. But even if you have subscribed, I encourage you to smash that like button. It helps distribute the content uh, over a wider uh, audience in YouTube. Um, yeah, leave a comment in the down under. Tell me what you've been picking up, any other recommendations in that genre of noise and drone and ambient music. Uh, and remember to pray for the people inside your head, for they won't be there when you're dead.